Dumbbell charts are a great way to be able to see the differences between two points in a data set. And the good thing is you can tailor them to how you want them to look. So you can either have them horizontal or vertical, just like what I've shown on screen. And I'm going to show you how to create both of these in R right now. So let's jump over to my R studio. So if you want to follow along, I've got the data sets and the R scripts, both in the description below, which you can download from data.world. So the first one I'm gonna show you is the normal one that you normally see in a horizontal way using the data set for Arsenal and Manchester City. And I'm gonna be showing how they performed over the last Premier League season, so 22-23, and their points scored to show how they changed over each game of that season. So the first thing you want to do is install the packages Tidyverse and ggtext. Tidyverse is going to be doing the majority of the actual work, but then we're going to use ggtext to add some analytical insight with some wording. And then within the next one, we're going to add some call outs as well. So first thing we do is install those. I've already installed them, so I'm just going to pull in the libraries. And then we want to load in the actual data set, which is EPL. 2022-2023 Arsenal and Manchester United CSV and we're just going to load that in and then view it so we can have a look at what the data looks like and as we can see here it's just showing the actual season name the game number which goes all the way up to 38 the team the position which they were in and then the total running points throughout each game so the main part of when you look at a dumbbell plot is that you have your two points and then you have a line linking the two. There is other packages out there will allow you to actually just do that as a straight action. But what I'm going to be using is geom line and geom point. So you're basically got your geom point will be your circles and then the geom line will be what you'll be controlling the actual line for. Now, the reason why I do it in this order of doing geom line first, so if I just run this section and then we can just view what that looks like, is that you can see the lines here. And if you did it the other way, once you start building out the plot, what happens is in the order you're doing it is how you're layering it. So the actual line, if you did the line after the point, would overlap on the actual point. So it would look a bit weird. This way, we're actually overlapping the line with the point. So it looks like they're joining. So if I run that now, you can see a simple plot where it's showing you the points, the difference. And then also down here, we got the teams in the legend. So we can see just from few lines of code, we basically got our chart. And then all we're doing to create this actual chart is by creating the actual chart name, which is going to call DB for dumbbell. And then we're pointing to whatever we save this file for this one we're showing for season 22, 23. And then we go into GM plot and then aesthetics. We are doing the running points. The running points is where it's going on in a cumulative way. So then we're seeing if they get two wins, it'll go from three to six, so on and so forth. And that's how comes you can see it grow over time. And then Y axis is just going to be the game number. And what we call this in the end is called actually match number. And then we add in the geom line, which I showed earlier. And then all we're doing is going to be grouping by the game number. So it knows where it's going to be moving. And then we got the color, which I set to a light sort of blue for now, but you can change that to a gray if you wanted to. You can just type in gray, light gray. You can play around, but I, I like using the hex code, which kind of will match later on, as you see, when we mix the two with the red and the blue for Manchester City and Arsenal, that how this will look. But for now, we're just keeping this just with this particular color. And then we've got the line width of 1.5, which is keeping it very small. So it looks like it's technically a dumbbell. And then, like I said, we add in the point and then we're grouping by what the color is, which is the team. And then we're doing it size four. You can play around the sizes for whatever you want to work. But this is what I've done here. And technically, you could just go with this just as it is. And it's that simple just to create one of these charts in this particular way. But we don't want to keep it like that. We want to make it even more fancy. So the first thing we want to do is actually set what the main hex colors are for Arsenal and Manchester City. I have these here. So for the main kit for and badge technically for Arsenal is this hex code. And then for Man City, it's this. So if I was to run in adding to the original chart, scale underscore color underscore manual, and then put what the values are. And then within that, I am setting the colors this and this within those areas. We can just run this 
and you'll see these will change to the colors set here. And as you can see, we now have that. Now to clean up the actual plot a little bit more, we're going to just give it a bit of spacing around. We're gonna move the legend to the top. We're gonna to move the gray in the background as well. And we're just gonna just minimize what the actual feel of it is. So it just looks less R graph, should we say. <laughs> it's just very sort of gray, bit basic, bit not very pleasant. So what we can do is just run with theme minimal which will reduce the actual theme and the background color to actually being white. And then within theme, we are going to add in legend position equals top. So that means it's the top, same as if you want to do right, left, bottom, it works the same way. And then panel.grid to remove the grid because we're doing equals element underscore blank. So that's what you use if you want to remove. Again, that's the same if you wanted to remove the actual legend and you didn't want it there, you could use the same. And then plot.margin equals margin. And I've just done one centimeter all the way around. So now it just gives it a little bit more space. So if we run this, we can now see we have a nice white plot with a bit of space around the edges and no lines. So we now got this in a more clean looking feel. Now, one thing we want to do is over here, there is 38 matches played over a season or in this particular season. And at the moment, you only see 0, 10, 20, 30. So you don't know what the numbers are. And also we want to change the name here to be match points for down here and then game number spaced out over here. And then for, like I said, we wanted to see it from one to 38. To do that, we want to scale underscore Y underscore continuous. And then in there you put breaks equals sequence or seek SEQ. And then you put what you want it to start from, what you want it to end and then by what. So we want it to start from one, we want it to end by 38, and we want to show it going up by one. So one, two, three, four, et cetera. So if we run this now, you'll see we now have one to 38 down the side. So now we can see what matches up with each dumbbell. Now we can see how this is panning out and we can watch how each team went in front and behind. So you can see at this point where it went Manchester City are behind Arsenal all the way up to game 30 by the looks of it. And then by 31, that's when they took over and then they went on to win the actual premiership in the end. But you can see that Arsenal continued to be in the lead and took a bigger lead around here. But you wanna know how many points were actually shown for each team. So to do this, you want to add in a data label and you do that by using geome underscore text. And then within there, you do the AES. And then for that, you want to select what you want to be your actual data label. And we're using running points, even though we changed the name on the Y axis, it's still called running points. And then we want to set by the color, which is going to be teams. And it will remember what we set as the color scheme here. And then we're going to do the actual size will be 3.5. And then you want to do a nudge on it, which is nudge underscore X, because we're moving that way. If you wanted to move them on top or below, that will be Y. And we want to move it 2.5 because otherwise it will overlap on these points here. So if we were to run these now, we'll now see the points. But the problem we have here is because we've nudged it a little bit to the right, all this information here is actually moving over to the right as well. Ideally, we want the right for the one who's actually to the right and then any that are to the left need to be on the left. Now, the way to do this is we want to be able to actually take what is the max of that particular game week. So let's say, for example, we use the top one here. If we knew that the max was going to be Manchester City with 89 points and the minimum would be 84 with Arsenal, the max would be there. And then we want to use an if else function to be able to then pick out if max, make it go over here. If not, go over here. And and that way we can set it and we need to do that by manipulating the actual data table to be able to find out what the max is and then set it for each game so then we can set the points and then also i will use that to then set the color that we have along here where we can see that if arsenal are ahead we want the line to be red and then when manchester city are ahead then the line will be blue and so to actually get what we want to be able to find out what the max is, what we want to be able to do is then create another variable table, which we're going to be called the same name with just underscore max. So we can differentiate which one we're going to be using moving forward. 
And then within that, we want to be able to put in what our table is called. And then we just want to select the columns that we want. And all we really need to know is the game number, the team and the running points. We then want to create a pivot wider, which will then select all the names, move it across, and then you have your running points. So the main thing is, is what we want to do is take what looks like this and move team to be over the top. So then you can see game one wouldn't be on two lines. It would just be one line. And then you've got Arsenal and Manchester City and then the number of points below. So Arsenal will have two running points, three, Man City will have three and three. So if we just run this point for now, you'll see what I mean. Oh, let's open it up. There we go. So now we have the game number and then the teams. So instead of where we have the team here, and because we only reduced it to these points, that one, that one, that one, we now have the number of running points underneath. So if we look at Arsenal, let's say it was pick game three. Arsenal had nine points and Manchester City had seven. Game three here, nine and seven. So we can see we now have there. And now we've done that, what we need to be able to find is if we moved over to create a column that basically gives us the difference so we can know what the difference is. But then also we want to group by the actual game number and then also create another column, which is going to have our main column here, which we want to be able to use. And this is called max. So in mutate, we're just going max equals max Man City and Arsenal. So it's just basically looking for which has got the max amount and what is it and it would do it by line so if i just run this now you will see what i mean we now go back and then we now can see we've got where i was saying about the difference we're not using that one here but for now the max that is then showing you what is the max amount here so let's just jump down here we can see game 14 arsenal had 37 and manchester city had 32 and the max was 37 which is what we wanted so now we have that information we now needed to move everything back so we went back to two game numbers for each one and then arsenal and manchester city were in their own column as team so what we do we just do ungroup pivot longer and then we pick the two that we want to unpivot which is manchester city and arsenal so if we run that we can go back and now we can see it here but now the names have changed it's now given you name and value so what we want to do is just rename name to be team and value to be points so then when we're moving forward this will make sense with what we're filling out here so if we now run this we're now going to see these names change and there we go we now have our table ready to start looking at with the data labels showing on both sides and also have the colors change depending on who goes in front so how we do that is now we combine all of those steps that i showed before so remember we've got our plot that where we set our x and y axis we got our geome line and then we got a geome point and we're keeping the same colors for now and then we got our scale manual to so then actually set the colors and then we got our theme minimizing we got the y scale continuous which is going to be changing that to be showing 1 to 38 and then we have the difference to where we do the points to each side so as we can see before we had nudge x and then we had 2.5 and that made them go just to the right as we can see here but what it does is if we go if underscore else points so we put in what the name of the table is and then point to what the actual column we're going to be using so that's where we use the dollar sign and then the column name which is points so if points equals and remember two equal signs max so that new column we created so basically we're going to go if this equals max then that will then give us 2.5 so it knows if we if that equals that then that's where the score needs to be now the thing here is these are max so you will get cases where they'll just overlap and it will just give you a color which is fine but for later on you will see it change so if we was to run this we can now see if we see 2.5 that way if it equals max minus 2.5 will be the other side and then i've just added a slight nudge just to kind of adjust how it sits vertically so if i was to run all this now we now have our data labels to the side of our chart so bring that in slightly we can see it's changed the colors and they all match up to where they need to be and then where they've gone on they've all matched up there so you can see even where it switches over it knows to use the max and that's where the points go so that's how you can see the data labels on both sides now as i mentioned 
what I wanted to do was do the similar technique, but this time with the color of the line. And it's exactly the same process. Instead of actually putting in what the numbers are, which we had here, for the geome line section, so this section over here, I'm just going to overwrite it by pointing back directly into the chart again, but this time we're calling it DB2. Instead of color being purely just that hex code, we are now going to make that color either that hex code or this lighter sort of pinkish hex code, so sort of a light red. And all we're doing is going if max points equals max, then make it the light blue, and if not, make it the light red pinky color. And also we're going to make the line width a bit bigger. So we're making the size a bit smaller, so we're just doing it just a slightly bit bigger so it looks like it's connected right over. So if we were to run this now, you can see these colors have changed. Where it was blue before, it's now showing you it's red for whenever Arsenal were ahead and then it changes to blue whenever Manchester City were ahead. The last thing you want to do is just add a title to the chart and some analytical summarization of it just to kind of guide people on what they're seeing within this data. And how you do this is first we want to do is remove this legend and then we're sticking to what we had before as our theme because what we're going to be doing is using theme and then we want to remove the legend. So I want to keep what we had before but we're just overwriting with the legend and this is going to overwrite what originally happened here. And all we're doing is pointing again back to the original chart. And then the only difference is we're adding labs and then labs within there you can do a title. Now there's a lot of different bits of wording in here and some sort of styling to get it to look in a particular way. So what I'm going to do is run it so then I can then go through how each bit creates what you actually see on screen. So as you can see we now have a title which is in bold and as you can see I've highlighted the teams of an actual color to be able to point out which the colors relate to because obviously now we don't have a legend you have nothing as a sort of reference to tell you what does red mean and what does blue mean so then we know Arsenal is the red and Man City is the blue. And then within here, I've also included different bolding to point out certain points of the text. So all I've done is written within the title all that information. So if you have something kind of written out what you want to do, all you have to do is just do labs in brackets, title equals, and then in quotation marks, just put in your wording and then it will show up in here. And don't worry if it starts to cut off at the end. This is where when you add theme and then plot dot title equals element underscore text box underscore simple size 15 this will help with setting the size that you're going to have for your title but because it adds that as well that also helps with actual wrapping of the text as well so this sets what is technically your title size here and then you can adjust what you want the size to be here now the reason why this isn't done with title and subtitle and everything like that is to get it to sit perfectly and wrap and just look as good as this it's actually easier to do all your control just within the title and just change where you want the breaks to be how the size you want to be the colors and bolding as well so now you're probably wondering how do you make it bold well all you have to do is just use on either side of any section you want to be bold with two stars you just add those and then that will make it bold across wherever you want to put it so as you can see here we've got the title that's the title and then we've got the different call out points here so we got here 76% you can see it's got that around it eight that's around there 18 that's around there and then two and then obviously I've done it with the, the actual teams as well but then I've also changed the color and there's the font so that's how you add in the bolt now you're probably wondering how have you managed to make this to go down to here so it's not carrying on beyond where it says 23 this is where you put in a break and all that is is you have your two arrow points and then BR on it and you just place that in there and what you'll find when you do that you sometimes feel like it's a little bit of a space if you see anything like that just keep deleting until these points join together or whatever the word was because any sort of spacing that gets taken into account so it seems a little bit off just remove any spaces between the actual break and it will actually work now as I said we've now changed the font size because you notice this is bigger than there so then all we've got now is we're setting the font size to 12 12 points so size 15 is the title and this would be size 15 if we didn't do this it now changes everything to size 
12. And then also it's changing the color and then the colors are set to the hex codes we got. And the way this is done is by setting within the two arrows. So if you can see from here all the way to here, if you just wanted to change the font, all you would do is just put an arrow in at the beginning of where you ever want to change the font size and do span space style equals. And then you just want to put in font size with a hyphen between font and size and then set it to 12 pt and just keep the same format that we've got here and then the same works for color so after you've done that and you want to set a color within whatever word you're using as i've done here with the teams all you do is again do the arrow span space style and then equals and instead of font size you just put color and then you just put in the hex code what it is and then instead of leaving it like like we did with the font size you just need to put another arrow backslash span and then closing another arrow on the outside and that just sets it and the same is for down here as we can see we've done the same for manchester city it's just changing what the hex code is and then wherever you want it to stop you do there and if you want to make it bold like i've done here all you do is just add the two stars to either side of it and then that will give you that look and that's how you can make this particular chart with the analytical commentary as well so now you've seen the one that you can be doing that's horizontal. What happens if you want to make one that was vertical? Well, this one I'm going to show you here with the whole of all seasons of the Premier League since it began in 92, all the way up to last season, which was 2023. And I have a data set in here. I have Man U, Man City, Chelsea and Liverpool. So if you wanted to, you could play around with including Chelsea and Liverpool in place of Manchester United or Manchester City, or just look Chelsea versus Liverpool. I just left in that extra a bit of data so you could see the results there as well and then all we need to do is again load in tidyverse and gg text and then we're just going to install the actual data set now which is called mu mc chell live epl results 1992 to 2023.csv so all we want to do is just load in those packages and that data set and then we can view this data set so we can see it's Premier League and we've got the season and then we've got each team we've got the game number and as you can see some of the older seasons actually had more than 38 games so we can see three seasons that actually had 42 games so then they add more points and then the goal difference and then the position as well but for this example all I'm going to be using is Manchester United and Manchester City so what I'm going to do is just create a variable where I'm taking what I've saved this file as EPL results we're now just going to call this Man U underscore Man City and then I'm just filtering by team or team equals Manchester City so if we just run this like this actually so we can see it we can now see we now just have Manchester City and Manchester United and the data provided. So like before we're going to create a dumbbell plot but this time we're just going to keep with the thickness of the lines already and then we're going to set the colors and we're going to set all the grid so I'm not going to go through all these different stages again we're just going to just create an actual dumbbell plot like this then then we can see this time we're not using points we're using the actual position where the team finished and we can see from the bottom to the top starting with the first season all the way up to the latest season and it's to the side now visually if you're looking at this is number one you would expect a finish to be to the right so at the moment we have our seasons going from the first to the latest so from bottom to top but also it's going one to 20 odd here well this is actually 18 position where they finished but logically when you're looking at something like this you would think first would be to the right so to be able to move these around we can use scale underscore x reverse that will reverse the x-axis so then instead of this being 1 to 18 which we got here it will reverse it to then be one that way so it would make more sense on how you would read the data and then also we're going to include so we know the actual positioning is we're going to make it 1 to 22 because 22 is the max that you had and then we want to go up by one so down here we go one to 22 but it'll be going the other way so 22 would be here and one would be here so if we was to run this now we now have a more logical way of how this would look so we can see these are the winners and then these are the seasons and then that's the position so we know if it's this way they finish lower but we're reading this from right to left and this is why it's a good idea to be able to make it so we can then start looking at how it might look going vertical but first thing we want to do is it doesn't help that these are over here we've moved everything over but really we actually want the seasons as well so we do that 
by using scale underscore y underscore discrete and then position equals right because then we're going to push it to the right and then these will jump over to here so if we run this now we now have them over here so now it just gives a little bit more sense so now we come to the point where we want to add a data labels next but remember we have that issue if i included them now it will just be everything on the right and it won't look very neat to the eye so what we want to do is do exactly what we did before with the arsenal and manchester city data set but this time we're just going to be using instead of arsenal obviously we're going to be including manchester united so it's going to be this exact same process as before we're just going to be grouping by season instead of game number and then we're going to do position instead of points or running points as it was before and we're still using team as the names so if you remember how it looked that's how we're going to do it so I'm just going to run this. If you need to reference back, just look back at when I did it for that because it's exactly the same process. It will just do exactly all the same things. So if we run that now, we will now have our table with the max. So if we open up this, we can see we now have the max and the diff as well. And also you can see there's times where there's NAs in here. And these are from when Manchester City were relegated in those seasons. And because of that, the NAs have caused the actual max to NA as well because it's like going, oh, na and one technically it should be one as max but it's not given na and that causes a problem because when you try and run it like we did before it won't actually pull through a number so down here it won't actually show a number there is a little workaround that can get around this and i'll come across that in a sec so just bear that in mind when you just look at that so now we've done that we can come back to our chart and we're just doing all the same things that we did before and we're just adding in like we did with the arsenal man city one we're going to be changing the color colors with where the bars are going to be different and then we're going to be changing how the data labels work but like I said we have a slight difference here because before where we just had what the position equals max or points equals max in our previous example I've included and exclamation mark is dot na and then put within max so what that's basically going is if it equals this and max then do that and then it's not do that this overrides the issue of where there is a actual blank because everything you're telling it to go that way and that means you'll see it because there isn't anything going the other way it will automatically put it there so it's going like if you see an na don't include it but if there is if it isn't an na then we're all good and then that's all that's doing and then we're just pointing it to a different size now these are slightly different sizing wise compared to the last one because that was 2.5 but 0.6 works with this it's just a case of just playing around and just seeing what fits perfectly with the data you got but this runs really well so we are going to run all this and i need to scroll up a little bit and do it like that and if we run we now have all of the numbers to see how positions finished and then you can see depending on who was actually ahead of the other team is based on the colors that we got here so we can see it's predominantly manchester united and then went man city and then manchester united and then it's dropped off and you kind of go oh what happened there and things so it's a good idea to have those call outs that with the title and the subtitle but also some additional ones as well which we'll get to but at the moment it's kind of over there but what would actually make this look better is if it was flipped and how you flip it is by using chord underscore flip. You can use these on literally any chart to flip it and it works just as well with this particular chart. So all you do is just add that to the chart and then you suddenly have it vertical. But as you might notice, the seasons are all overlapping. So how do we get around that problem? Well, all we have to do is set scale underscore y underscore discrete that will then give us our positioning still because that's what we used it before within there we want to do guide equals guide underscore access and then we want to do in brackets angle equals 90 because then we want it to go like that so it goes 90 degrees you could do 45 but i've done it as 45 i actually preferred it with 90 so i'm going to keep it that way and then you still keep your position right because if you didn't then it would move it to the bottom because you remember it's flipped the bottom is actually left right is actually top so if we run this now we now have our season so we can see them here and we can see it going that way but it would look better if we flipped it around so we can see the latest here and then the past is to the right so we're always looking from the latest to the past instead of from the past to the latest so how we do that is within our scale underscore y underscore discrete is to include limits equals rev which is reverse 
So we just overwrite what we did there with this and we now have it going the other way. So now we have last season here all the way to the first season over here. So you can see the transition over time. So now we've done all of that. Now we want to add in our text again. So just like before, we just have theme legend position none. So we're removing it. And then if you want to include any additional bits, you can put in here. But one thing I have done slightly, it's a bit of a cheat, I guess, is I didn't want that there but because the amount of wording it was hard to get a nice padding in place and the only way I found to actually get a bit of a padding between the seasons and the wording without doing a break which made it too big and then doing additional padding around it just kind of squished a bit and it just didn't look quite right was instead of removing the actual label I just made it white so whatever the, your background color is if you just make it the background color it removes that but it leaves that bit of padding around it so it just makes it look a lot better so that's the only difference I've got there and then we've got the same logic where we've got size 15 the only difference here is that I've done 11 as the font size for the subtotal because there's quite a lot of wording this time so if we run it if we just make this out a bit see if we can get it yeah we go try and get it to fit a little bit more there we go so as you can see we've got a nice bit of padding around here now I do have a break around here and that's that there but what else I found was just it, it wasn't enough and that's why it was good to actually include making the actual title white instead of removing it and then as before I'm not going to go over it again because it is a lot of wording but all I did was just take my wording and bullet in and then I've just added in all the bits in so where I've got my title I've then added in a break made it bold with the stars and then I've included where I've ever said Manchester United I made it red where I've said Man City I've made it blue just to highlight the bits and then I've pointed out different parts to actually explain kind of what's going on in the data but one thing with giving the wording is it's still a bit of work for people because you'll be looking and going and go okay and Alex Ferguson finished no lower than third. Uh, they won 13 Premier League titles. Although I just noticed I seem to have the L as a not a capital. So let's fix that. There we go. And then let's run it again. And there we go. And in that time, yeah, so we've gone finished no lower than third and won 13 Premier League titles in that time. Since Alex Ferguson left in 2003, so then you'd be like, where's 2003? Okay, here. So this was his last season. Uh, Manchester United have yet to win a Premiership. So they haven't. They finished second was the highest a couple of times but this was the last time they won and that was with Sir Alex Ferguson and it's been Manchester City have been above them and finished every season below Manchester City since Alex Ferguson left. Funny thing is I had no idea that was the case. I've kind of thought that might be the case but I didn't realise how much there was a difference from the point of when Alex Ferguson left. I knew he was important to Manchester United and Manchester United haven't been the same ever since but this surprised me. It's quite fun when you actually do stuff like this because you end up finding things in going oh don't don't always know and so you like look actually at the data and then you're like oh okay that's actually quite interesting and then that's what brings me to the Manchester City one because one I knew they had been relegated and thing but I didn't realize it got relegated twice and then the growth of when they were actually bought by the Abu Dhabi United group in 2008 which was actually a I think it was August so so this is their first season so the growth is they've bought them over here although Manchester City were doing okay under their previous owner in essence because they had quite a bit of money injection then so it's not like they didn't have kind of a, a stable thing going but the transition from when they actually after a full season got things moving you can see they ended up winning the league well winning the premiership for the first time in literally four seasons which is quite impressive and at that time you can see where Pep Guardiola he joined and again you have to look to see where he is so yeah it's a bit of work when you're trying to figure it all out this is where we can do little call out so how these call outs work are if we run this one we now have a point that tells us when the Abu Dhabi United group bought Manchester City so we can say they bought them then and then it points to which season that was all we need to do is use annotate and then we're using geom equals segment. So this bit is basically the line. So we're setting the line and then this bit here is adding on where we're going to be having the text. And then all I've done is put its segments, which is basically a line and then change the line type to dotted. And then you're setting the points of where you want it to sort of sit. This is basically telling you this is 17 across here and then 15 across here. So it knows do 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 do. But this is 
is end. So end at 15, which is the Y, and then end at 11, which is there. So we know that's the point of how long the line's going to be, but this is the starting point. And then we're going to change the color. And then you, there's a little arrow head there, but you can't really see it now. It's there. And then the text works the same way. You're just pointing to where you want it to start. So I've done it 18. Just remember X because it's switched. This is X and this is Y. Then you've got your bits and then you've got where you color and then your label and then right justified. It's just putting it to the side so you know it's going to look like that. So and all I've done for Sir Alex Ferguson leaving is then done the same, just this time changing the color, changing the placing. And then I've put in there where the actual point happened. And then I did the same with when Pep joined Manchester City. So then you can see where those points are. And this is the great thing. So you can show within a graph, not only the actual data but actually give a summarization of it but then also call out certain points of the data so it's no effort for someone to actually look at it and go oh, okay I get that and then you can just look at it and then all you have to do is just export as image and then save it and there you go you've got your chart and the great thing is if you wanted to be able to get your hands on more football data like this check out this video over here where I show you how I got all this data to create the data sets used within this actual tutorial all within a package in R so have a look and enjoy.